on December the 11th, 1822, a group of settlers ended their long voyage across the Atlantic Ocean, landing on a small island at the mouth of the Mesurado River, which they named Providence Island, secured with part of the mainland by treaty with six tribal kings. Crossing to the mainland, the settlers thrived and created a settlement that would become the city of Monrovia. Many such communities grew up and the territory expanded until 25 years later, representatives from each of these communities came together at a constitutional convention and on July the 26th, 1847, signed a declaration of independence, creating the free, sovereign and independent nation of Liberia. That was 127 years ago. Today, businessmen and investors from all parts of the world have discovered the commercial and industrial potential that is the wealth of Liberia, with a government firmly committed to an open-door policy and the principles and practice of free enterprise. Monrovia, capital city of Liberia. Its 150-year history reflected in a graceful cultural heritage, but a city as modern as today, the country having developed a fine balance between traditional African values and the modern way of life. Buildings steeped in the tradition of Liberia's rich history, Buildings reflecting the country's promise of a rich future, as with the imposing executive mansion, home of Liberia's president, William R. Talbot. Buildings that reflect the civic dignity of the city, its commerce and industry. For the well-being of its people, the J.F. Kennedy Memorial Hospital, one of the finest in West Africa. Overlooking the city is the renowned Ducor Intercontinental Hotel, with a welcome for the visitor, one of the many fine hotels in Monrovia. Looking out across the Atlantic Ocean, the Ducor Intercontinental also looks out to one of the islands first sighted by those early settlers 150 years ago, Bushrod Island. Today, Bushrod Island contains one of Liberia's many industrial estates, with a diversity of industry catering for much of the country's needs and providing exports, adding to Liberia's healthy balance, as with the soap factory. With an ever-expanding building and construction program, cement is essential, and this large cement works is situated conveniently close to Monrovia City. Serving the building industry too is a window and sun louver factory established by the Mesurado group of companies, an entirely Liberian-owned enterprise providing employment for many hundreds of Liberians. Another Liberian enterprise is a paint factory, effecting even further savings in foreign exchange by having its own can manufacturing plant. Supplying all types of animal and chicken feed, the Liberian Feed Mill Company also advised farmers on the most suitable methods of animal feeding. And a grain and wheat milling plant near Buchanan supplies a domestic demand. The Liberian Development Corporation stimulates industrial investment and the development of existing enterprises, assisting investors to identify investment opportunities, taking advantage of the country's resources and market requirements. Tobacco, 
is one of Liberia's developing industries, and utilizing the country's own tobacco crop, a cigarette factory produces brands blended to local tastes. Liberia offers the investor security, a low level of private and corporate taxation, and a balance of trade that has been favorable for 20 years. To encourage young farmers in this fast developing industry, a tobacco experimental farm has been set up, looking into the most suitable types of tobacco for Liberia's ideal soil and climatic conditions, and teaching farmers to take every advantage of this valuable addition to the country's industries. President William R. Talbot is intensely interested in the youth of his country, but young and old alike are completely involved in the future of their country through self-help programs instituted by the president, when he himself created rally projects to undertake the construction of schools and hospitals and roads linking outlying districts, financed with funds raised by the people themselves without seeking outside aid. Rally time, a complete involvement of the people in their country's future. President Talbot himself also instituted a program of rehousing families formerly living in overcrowded areas. And on new housing estates such as Gardnersville and another named after the assassinated leader of the Guinea-Bissau liberation movement, Amikar Cabral, families can be raised in pleasant, healthy surroundings preparing for their inheritance, which is the wealth of Liberia. Realizing the importance of the younger generation in the future of his country, President Talbot refers to the youth of Liberia as his precious jewels. And here at the University of Liberia, these young people are able to acquire the higher learning required of them if they are to take the fullest advantage of the foundations laid down for them by today's leaders. With the importance of agriculture, the University of Liberia has established a College of Agriculture and Forestry which, in addition to its academic importance, also serves as a major agricultural research centre. The Forest Products Research Laboratory has a well-established nursery growing more than 20 different tree species to determine their suitability for large-scale commercial production. The Agricultural Extension Training Center of the college offers training from simple farming methods and management to crop physiology, and students are taught the importance of meteorology in good crop management. Animal husbandry is also of major importance, many of the country's cattle being supplied to a large meatpacking plant to meet the increasing demand for frozen meat products. Oil palms grow profusely in Liberia, providing a cash crop income for smallholders and cooperatives and students receive the benefit of research into this valuable crop. Palm kernels are crushed at modern oil mills, like this operated by the Liberian Produce Marketing Corporation, located near the port of Monrovia, where processed oil is stored to facilitate easy onboard loading. The Liberian Produce Marketing Corporation, a joint venture of the Liberian government with the East Asiatic Company of Denmark, buys much of Liberia's palm oil, coffee and cocoa maintaining a huge storage complex within the free port of Monrovia for shipment to all parts of the world. And in addition to direct buying and overseas sales, has vast areas of its own under cultivation, supplied by the corporation's own nurseries. President Talbot and his administration, aware of the great economic potential of the country's agriculture, has classified agriculture as the number one priority in the National Development Programme which is committed to making the country self-sufficient in rice, the staple food of the population. Under this program, and with the ideal climate of northern Liberia, thousands of acres have been put under cultivation, producing upland and swamp rice for sale to the domestic market. Irrigation schemes have been constructed under expert guidance and high-grade rice will soon be available to meet the demands of the country at reasonable cost. The Foyer Agricultural Development Project, testimony to a far-sighted administration. Further to the south are the famous rubber plantations of Liberia. 
cultivated by smallholders and large estate owners alike, Liberia is one of the world's most important suppliers of natural rubber. From the plantation, rubber is processed into either latex or crepe form and transported for shipment from the ports of Monrovia, Greenville or Harper. Rubber, the wealth of Liberia. Timber, yet another source of Liberia's wealth. Much of Liberia is covered with high forest containing more than 200 varieties of trees, offering investment possibilities in the wealth of these vast reserves of high quality timber. Sessions in the interior, logs are transported for shipment to all parts of the world from the ports of Buchanan or Monrovia. The world-renowned free port of Monrovia, known to ships carrying the flags of many nations, either coming to pick up valuable produce or to offload cargoes in the free port area. The free port of Monrovia, the only duty-free port in the whole of West Africa, where cargoes can be transshipped or held in storage in the free port area, attracting no customs tariffs whatsoever, thereby cutting costs to the shippers of goods in transit an area where frustrated consignments while awaiting onward sale are held pending transshipment to other destinations, all completely duty-free. The free port of Monrovia, gateway to West Africa. Also based on the port of Monrovia, is one of the largest fishing fleets in West Africa, operated by the Mesurado Group and an important part of the country's economy. Reaching the fishing grounds, the nets are put out for the haul. and the fleet settles down for the trawl, each trawl taking about four hours. Day and night, every four hours, the catch is hauled in. wealth from the sea, and at Mesurado's own processing plant, each catch is cleaned and sorted within minutes of landing to be packed and frozen. Some of the finest shrimp in the world are off the Liberian coast, 
and every catch is carefully controlled and analysed to meet stringent international standards for export to many parts of the world. Japan, a critical consumer, is one of Liberia's biggest customers. Tourists discover that there's more to see in Liberia, with more than 300 miles of some of the finest beaches in the world. Fishing second to none, and hotels and restaurants offering a gourmet's delight with an international cuisine. Liberia's natural coastline caters for the children too. Every beach having a quiet, peaceful lagoon right behind the more boisterous sea, where children can swim and play in perfect safety. And where dad can put his feet up without a care in the world. Beaches with romantic names like Caesars, Coopers, Coles Beach, Sugar Beach offer weekend barbecues and beach chalets for a longer stay. And there's always plenty of local interest. Close by Roberts International Airport is Roberts Field Hotel on the banks of the Farmington River, an ideal for a stopover on arrival or before leaving. Just a short drive from Monrovia is the picturesque town of Robertsport, like Roberts Field, named after Liberia's first president. Robertsport, with a charm and culture all its own, with placid Lake Pizzo on one side and the Atlantic Ocean on the other, with a luxurious hotel overlooking the ocean and a favourite spot for out-of-towners. Safe for the children, ideal for water skiers or just lazing in the sun, more than 300 miles of palm-lined golden sands make this a tourist paradise. Visitors are entertained throughout the country by traditional dance troops, the National Dance Troupe of Liberia having performed throughout the world. can resist the art of the Liberian carver. The traditional brass beater offers exquisite workmanship. But perhaps Liberia is best known for the delicate work of the ivory carver, famed and admired the world over. And for those travelling to other parts of West Africa, Air Liberia operates frequent and convenient scheduled and charter services. From Spriggs Payne Airport, located within Monrovia City, Air Liberia flies the Pepperbird route, named after the tiny bird found only in Liberia, to any of the country's many airfields. Convenient for the businessman in a hurry or the visitor wishing to see more of this fascinating country, like the awe-inspiring Nimba Mountain. Nimba Mountain, one of the largest iron ore deposits in the world, providing one of the greatest sources of revenue in Liberia's economy, iron ore, together with rubber, represents some 85% of Liberia's exports. Drilled in shelf formation, iron ore is separated from waste material for processing. Waste material being returned for reclamation and transported in giant bulk carriers, each carrying a load of 110 tonnes.
After crushing, the ore is transported to the railhead by overhead conveyor systems for railing south to the processing plants. At Buchanan, refining is carried out at one of the largest refining plants in Africa, where a high-grade ore is produced ready for shipment. This huge complex provides employment for many hundreds of Liberians and, similar to many others throughout the country, maintains a trade centre for the training of artisans and technicians. Although Nimba is the largest, there are many iron ore deposits in Liberia and ore from many upcountry mines is railed to the ports of Monrovia and Buchanan to be stockpiled ready for shipment. Giant mechanical grabs load the refined ore onto conveyor systems for loading into the special ore carriers that can be seen in Liberia's ports every day of the year. wealth of Liberia. The wealth of Liberia. A complete involvement of the people in the future of their country. A future in the capable hands of President William R. Talbot and his administration. President Talbot has high regard for his country's important international position, fully supporting the aims and principles of the Organization of African Unity. Here he is joined by the Prime Minister of Guinea, en route to the OAU conference in Mogadishu. President Talbot is the 19th President of the Republic, Liberia being one of the few countries where governments have constitutionally succeeded one another for more than a century. <laughs>